everyone, and welcome to the NBA Show Reviews. This is Jim Scork, and with me I have an old man. Uh, you can't. And a hippogriff immigrant thing that doesn't come from any other country that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> My famous <laughs> princess is Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> okay, review's over. It's done. That's everything that I needed. I'll see you guys next next week. <laughs> I have no other thing to say. <laughs> you couldn't put it better. How can you laugh at my pain? <laughs> I laugh at your pain. I am actually so happy to hear you say that. <sighs> I'm going to point at you and say, you guys, send all the rage and all your anger to Silver. He's going to speak me in this episode. Uh, but, yes. Princess Luna. Got your West line. Oh, the humanity. Wait, sorry, equity. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But, These horses yeah. are starting off on the wrong hoof. <laughs> In case you didn't know, we are reviewing, uh, I cannot speak today. We are reviewing episode, episode. We are not reviewing any episode. Season 5 isn't even out. We are reviewing issue 7 of the Friends Forever comics, published by ADW, starring Princess Luna and Pinkie Pie. Uh, it's a comic written by Jeremy Whitley, with art by Tony Flicks. And we're going to jump right away into first impressions because, oh my god, this is just, uh, this is going to be an interesting one to tackle. So, please, Silver, explain why is your favorite princess Kanye West? Because she storms on stage, interrupts, and ta uses that line. <laughs> They're setting the parallel. The parallel just stabs me to the core. It causes me to scream very effeminately. <laughs> That's totally me. <laughs> all right. So, but in all honesty, this is a fascinating run because I think this was the first time Luna was written and drawn by a team other than uh, Katie Cook and Andy Price. True. I'm trying to, trying to remember. They did the Luna Micro, and this is Luna's yeah. first romp with uh, the Friends Forever. Yeah, this is the first time that we see Luna in the in the Friends Forever. Though the the first time that we saw Luna being written in the comics was uh, in the Nightmare Rarity arc, and now I don't remember who wrote that one. Uh, that's true. But, I'm, I'm already overlooking things. Normally, no, it, it, it is fine. Well, normally, Cook and Price uh, like to tackle Luna. They, you know, they put forth this. L lesson, uh, Luna Eclipsed Persona tiled up to 11. Uh, and the artwork is lovely. So here we have just a different approach to Luna than what we've seen s thus far. Even though at yeah. first they look very similar. Yeah, that is, yeah, with the, you know, she's the shouty, angry horse. Uh, with the thou and the thine and the, and the us. But yeah, I will, I will agree with you when you say that, uh, the Princess Luna that Andy Cook, uh, Andy Price and Katie Cook do is a lot more enjoyable, a lot more fun. This one seems a bit more Therioth. With a Therioth. With a Therioth. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I completely trampled over your first impressions. Go, go, go ahead. Please continue. Well, I enjoyed this. It is not in my top three, but that's because that's a pretty selective spot, but it's, it's high up there in, terms of likability. Whereas a lot of comics are trying to find the common ground, this is two very diametrically different ponies trying to learn. Well, one is trying to learn from the other. And perhaps that's the thing that works against the comic. While Luna is trying to learn to laugh at herself, Pinky doesn't really learn anything of her on her own. What does she take away from this? Uh, Big depression after Luna ditches her halfway through the comic, which I really have to talk about that actually. Oh, yeah. oh, there, there'll be there'll be time, but thank thankfully it yeah. still ends on a happy note. Though curiously, they don't the the ponies don't speak to one another again after that breakup. Oh, they broke up, and the shippers doth whale. Oh, 
But yeah, what about you, Norman? What do you think of this one comic? This is another week where I go meh. Really? Yeah, man. Really? Like, I I was excited. No, when I first heard that the comic is going to be Pinky and Luna, and the whole premise is Luna trying to laugh at herself and blah blah blah, I could just tell that uh no, this is not going to end well. And when when I read it, it's like okay, 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 Lu- Luna. Mm-hmm, uh-huh, okay. And then like, ah, she dishes out the pain, but she can't take it. So it's one of those, mm, yeah. Uh, are you sure you're not getting too old for this? No, no, I'm I'm sure. But <clears throat> the the lesson at the end there, like, that's the most important part. The journey to the lesson, that's, that's the most, that's the painful part. That is the pro. That is the problem that you have. You have yeah. the problem with the, with the journey. Yeah, yeah. I have a problem with Kanye West Luna. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to let it go, aren't you? Uh, boy. No, it's comedy gold. I, I have an issue with this comic. I, I like, I like a lot of things in it, but the two or th- the the one or two things that are in it that annoy me annoy me a lot and are one of the reasons why I don't give it a higher score is that to me it falls on the same level as the perhaps the Fluttershy micro or the Rainbow Dash micro to me this is a very big meh uh, issue and it all comes down to the problem that, uh, that that I think the characterization of Princess Luna is all over the place and I really don't I really don't like what they have done with her in this one uh, I'll go into further detail later on. I can I can assure you of that. But uh, despite the many interesting ideas that it has, this is one of the comics that I reread the least. Um, perhaps I actually well I I go back into it every now and then, but just to check a couple of details and to figure out what was the purpose of making Princess Luna like this, which uh, like, it is like Kanye what? West. Not, not, not just like Kanye West, but the, <laughs> the, I, I will, I will, I will explain it later. You, you will hear me rant and talk about the, 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 the one page that made me go, no, 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 Luna, you're better than, no, the, the, you were going okay, but you completely ruined yourself. No, no, it's, oh, why is, Jeremy Whitley, what have you, do, what are you doing with my favorite princess? Ah, all right, I guess. The only way that you can get a proper Princess Luna is with Andy Price and Katie Cook. Mm-hmm. Ah, resignation. But, yeah. Anyway, I think we, uh, from now on, uh, actually, we managed to give our thoughts about the comic without talking to spoilers. This is a first. Yay. Holy, holy cow, that's amazing. But starting now, no holds barred. We're going to talk about the spoilers. So, guys, watch it. Um, if you want to still read the comic, uh, eh, I'm really not sure what to tell you. Go from ahead. my opinion, okay, yeah, if you want to read the comic, go ahead. But from now on, we're going to, we're going to spoil the hell out of it. So, be warned. We, we... Wait, what, what's this we now? You just talked about your resignation. <laughs> I'm in charge now. <laughs> Okay, I have no problem. You take the wheel. <laughs> Seriously? And, well, I didn't know that, hip- that hippogriffs knew how to drive, but okay, sure, take the wheel. Go, all mm-hmm. yours. Are you kidding? I've, we're the only things with digits. Ponies are the ones who shouldn't be driving. How do you take <laughs> the steering wheel? Uh, well, <laughs> if I ever had an OC of myself, which I haven't done yet, it will be a it will be a Griffon. So, I think I will be okay dri- driving a car. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Norman, what would your OC be? I already have an OC. He's an yeah, pony. Think... Oh, there you go. It's okay, an old so... Earth pony. <laughs> so, hey. Very old. Hey. Yes. Of course, I'm probably <laughs> the oldest one here. Can't you see hey. Grandpa's reading his stories? <laughs> <laughs> I'm making my review show, my grandchildren. Leave me alone. <laughs> it's <laughs> Whippersnappers. <laughs> A humbug. <sighs> humbug. humbug. All right. So shall we shall we dive into this? Yep, yep. Yes, yes. Let's dive into this. Let me go get my uh, diving suit. Oh, boy. I'm gonna need one of those. I, I I need a diving bell. Anyway, yeah. Let's let's do this. God, I'm silly. 
Good. You're on the right show then. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start off by making all the library fans cry because they're still in the library. <laughs> they, are. they are. Sorting sorting books that are warm colored and not just blue and green over and over. I'm sorry, but I just drew the, the Twilight's Castle library for a video and good God, they have a dark color scheme. Everything's so bright. A cold color scheme, I, I should say. Um, so, and Spike is uh, complaining a little about having to do work that technically he's done a million times over. I mean, this is Twilight. They probably dust every day. True. For living in a house where uh, we clean every single week and sometimes every single day, it's very easy to complain when you keep doing the same thing over and over and over and over. And over. Oh, God, Dad, get me out of here. Anyway, no, 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 it's okay. It's okay, but, fine. But anyway, there's a knock at the door followed by a loud explosion. Twilight Sparkle, your princess requires your assistance. And she sounds just like that. So, yes, here is Princess Luna come to ask for a huge help. And this part I really like. This is a talk about how things were... Back in the day, when Luna and Celestia were ruling together, they were distant, they were unapproachable, the common pony bowed to them deeply, and they more expected it. So when Nightmare Moon happened, obviously, there needed to be some changes. And Celestia started doing a, uh, what does she call it? The Chuckle Lot. Huh. Yeah, the Chuckle uh, the Lot Festival. A Basically, a performance in which she starts to become more approachable to her subjects. Which might explain why she, the most experienced of the four princesses, is so easygoing. She understands that uh, you can't have this barrier between you and your subjects. So even though she's not the focus of this uh, comic, it fleshes out her character and history as well, which I greatly enjoy. Only problem is Luna is still in the mindset of the pre- uh, Nightmare Moon fall, where she is supposed to be revered and respected. And so she cannot stand the idea of ponies laughing at her. And she doesn't know how to crack a joke. Let's just ignore everything we saw in uh, Luna Eclipsed, where she was pulling practical jokes left and right. Towards the end. Mm. Towards the end. I, I think that's kind of the frustration people have with comic Luna, that she has reverted to before what, before the end of Luna Eclipsed. You She's sure? still in, because... in the when I see Andy Price does his work, especially with the Luna Micro and let me see. Uh, yeah, I think the Luna Micro is a big one. Uh, she's kind of open with everyone and everyone s seems to get along with her. But she's still speaking in an archaic dialect and using the royal cantalot voice. Yeah, well, it's hard to, well, it's hard to adjust your speech pattern. But she is kind of open with people and she does go out and play chess with them, even though if it's a terrible way to play chess with your minions, I mean, subjects. Are you kidding? That's like the best way to play chess ever. <laughs> hey, bro Brony, Brony panel, we'll, we'll get like the most popular people to play a chess game with all the congoers is <laughs> chess pieces. It, w it will create so much resentment. <laughs> Are you sure no drama? That too. Well, I guess... I guess this is this kind of goes goes to show perhaps the big the big issue that I have with the comic is that you guys are saying it right away. I think the characterization of Princess Luna is not all that there. They reverted her without a good explanation or a reasoning behind it. Mm, true. Like why why doing this? There was no need for them to do this. Yeah, I think that's why I didn't click with this comic. The thing is with Luna, comic Luna is. She's funny, she's easygoing, um, she's open-minded to new things, and she's fun. And over here, what's happening, It I don't want to put in head cannons, but head cannons, when I'm placing them, it's like, okay, this Luna is somewhere around after Luna Eclipse, but I don't know, Twilight has wings, so meh. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really big deal, say. <laughs> Carry on, Silver. What happened next? Well, yeah, yeah. Twilight Sparkle's going to teach her comedy, she. She got books on everything. And she got and she got her boy, Spike the Dragon. He'll take your thumbs, but you're a pony, so no biggie. <laughs> uh, your horseshoes. 
And for and three panels, you just see the books piling up around Luna and company. Spike is napping through most of it, which, smart boy. Though I'm sure he's startled awake when Luna declares, Twilight sparkles, cease your prattling at once. And how many ponies in Ponyville are like, yay! <laughs> but then Luna's a little more, she's a little more apologetic. She's more humble. I think Twilight just pushed her a little too far there. So Twilight has the answer that if you can't read about comedy, it's best to learn from the master. So let's go to the pony that people have continually said is less funny as the se- as the series goes on. <laughs> oh, no, that's I'm mean. sorry, but well, it is. But I have to say, it's been a growing debate within the fandom. Pinky's humor is it becoming lighthearted and flippant, or is it becoming annoying? And I think my answer would be it depends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So comedy that... is comedy is very subjective. There are things that are funny to some people that are not funny to others. Uh, I have seen some people laugh their asses off watching Meet the Spartans and not even chuckle once while watching Airplane. So, oh, well, yeah. All right, were these people from Bizarro World? No, they are, no they're Spanish. <laughs> oh, so <God>. almost. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Then it's... Uh, uh, El Worldo del Bizarro? <laughs> that was probably incredibly racist. I do apologize, but at the same time... Funny, I don't enough, know. funny enough, you kind of pronounced it right. <laughs> Woohoo! Yeah. High school Spanish saves me. Yay. <laughs> and yet, I'm an American. So, oh, it's, it's expected of me. Uh, it's okay. Nobody's perfect. <laughs> Speaking of imperfect, we get Pinky's kind of big reveal because first she's screaming ah it's nightmare moon even though uh, i've had seen you in several comics and we've had adventures together i'm calling you nightmare moon uh, i'm going to be mean to you for no particular reason whatsoever uh, Wee! i'm yeah, a... i'm the funny one <laughs> I, uh, no well it, well it is kind of funny to see a periscope coming out of a haystack you yeah, wonder true. where's where's pinky been keeping that uh, Cancel that question. I I wish not to know. <laughs> no, she has peri- periscopes <laughs> hidden all over Ponyville in case of, in case of periscope emergency. <laughs> uh, it's a submarine message. Oh boy. Yeah. So and then what may be the funniest? Silence, Luna of Equestria. <laughs> I mean, how often can can a pony turn the royal Canterlot voice against one of the royal Canterlot ponies? Good to see that Luna is not thinking. She she doesn't look like she's thinking. Oh my God, dungeon! <laughs> he here's dungeon. I just love the sequence of what's going to happen here in just art. Like you have Luna, sorry, you have Pinkie Pie screaming like Luna, and then Pinkie Pie questioning Luna about what she wants to do, her explaining, and then Luna looking down upon Pinkie like she's serious, and then hey. They they got they they got a kingship here. Yeah. Yay! What is your quest? <laughs> to find the Holy Grail. What is your name? <laughs> Prince Sir Lancelot. Yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite color? Red. No, blue. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it is um. I I will agree with you that in in this one page, Luna and Pinky, they both come up on the same level and they they start becoming like more equals. Like they have enough confidence on each other to talk each other with like, you know, normal people will talk to each other. Mm -hmm. Which I think it's the least we can ask this comic to do. It's like, Mm -hmm. yes, you are actually taking advantage of making the uh, making the characters interact with each other. Thank you. That's that's cool. That's enjoyable. That's nice. True, true. But, oh boy. but then boot camp starts. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Because, because I will say, as much as the as that page offers some fun images and perhaps even a little bit of scary Luna and scary Pinky. Next up, we have Pinky trying to go all drill sergeant, and Luna's just not getting the joke. The loudest pony isn't talking loud enough. <laughs> and then we have the funny farm. If oh, that yeah. doesn't sum if that doesn't sum up Pinky in a word, two two words. And I kind of feel like they're just recycling uh, ideas from Party of One because now it's Rocky, uh, Mr. Turnip, Madame Lafleur, 
Uh, yeah, certain- yeah, like, what is the point of having those cameos that shouldn't even count as cameos? They're just objects. True, but hey, people think it's funny, so we go, we go, we, we, we move on from there. And it's, and the new addition, Sir Lincelot. I thought Sir Lincelot one, was always there. Sir Lincelot was in, in Party of One as well. It was the pile of, you know, dust. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, then I get mixed up. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen that episode, but it feels like they're saying, oh, this was in the show, so let's include it here. Fans will like it. And I'm like, yeah, the goal here is for Pinky to teach comedy, not to make Pinky look out and out insane. Mm-hmm. You know what? I, I This just popped into my head. It would be much funnier if Pinkie Pie were to bring Luna to Pony Archie. Actually, yeah, that's a good idea. Why wouldn't they bring Poniatsi back from the Pinkie Pie micro? That would be great. Poniatsi is giving class and all that. They could go visit him, have a cameo from a character that everybody enjoyed. It's not like they need a voice actor to voice him. They mm-hmm. just need to put him in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're you're right. Why of... isn't Poniatsi in this comic? Oh, my God, you're absolutely correct. Damn it. He, he passed away off screen. <laughs> oh, no, don't joke about Oh. I agree That's... with the booing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I had it was the darkest answer I had to speak in. Oh boy! Oh my god! No, but no, seriously, why wouldn't they include Poniatsi? What is the reason why they didn't bring him up? But, hell, I think I think this is written by the same guy who did the Pinkie Pie Micro. Hang on a minute, I'm gonna check it out while you guys keep discussing this. Well, I'm 100 percent sure. Have well, I... well, now now I probably got people in the eyes booed at me, but in reality, uh, Poniatsi. Here's the catch twenty two. Mm-hmm. This is the Pinky and and uh, Luna micro. If you add Poniachi, it'd be like adding that uh, Discord, truffle yeah. that truffle lady from the first ish, first Friends Forever. No, I mean you it, could do it this way where Poniachi couldn't get couldn't break through to Luna, and okay, we'll still have this scene, but it, it it'll be a nice um, at least. For us who just thought about it or who have been thinking about it or people who are wondering what happened to Pony Archie, it'll be a nice um, cameo. cameo. Touch. Yeah, yeah. It'll be a nice cameo like, oh, Pony Archie. And then the, you don't even have to do it. You don't even have to draw him. You'll just go outside the clown school and then just go back and then like Pony Archie couldn't handle you. That, that's about it. Well, or here's a here's a thought. They go, we see them walking into Pony Archie's uh, school. school and he's waving hello i mean mm-hmm. you know okay and then the next panel they're walking out and <laughs> the entire place has been decimated <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 luna's looking stern pinky's looking back worried and poniachi's just completely frazzled from what just happened <laughs> that letting the audience fill in the gaps a lo- with their imagination would be uh, a great way to address this was an option but it didn't work out yeah two panels done Mm-hmm. Uh, as opposed to my dark head cannon, which I'm sure has made some of you cry. Yep. I I, I actually kind of flipped off something. I don't know what it was. It just flew at the window. Uh, <laughs> you actually flipped the table? I've made him flip the table. <laughs> yeah, I was like, ah! <laughs> but anywho, um, so with the funny camp, was it? Okay, with the funny farm, the Luna asked what this was, that, and seems... Um, chain of event happened and all the pranks they got activated at the same time I mean Pinky shows all this stuff and this is probably the slowest pacing in the whole comic it's mm, building up yeah. to Luna falling over and getting mad at being the butt of the joke mm-hmm. or should we say the finally the fine plot of the joke uh-huh. <laughs> and, well of all princesses she has the best butt so <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, it's like um before before we go any further, you know what also could it work better instead of having the um the different objects from Party of One, right? The pe- the pets. Mm-hmm. Have the her pets. prank the have her prank the pets. No no no, have her uh have the pets help out Pinkie Pie, like you know, with the help of Winona Tank, I... uh Gummy and all that. It it could be funnier if you you know have uh, if, I, I don't know, I have the I have the idea of Luna at the end of that uh, that funny farm covered in the remains of all the jokes with Gummy hanging on top of her head. 
So that that's I don't know. That's a funny image. Well, that's a funny image, but probably won't work because of why were the pet there and why were they helping? Like you raises it's you raises more question than answers. Half of the really. half of, half of the answers would be it's Pinkie Pie. Yeah, you don't need but, to explain Pinkie Pie. Yeah, but, but I, I'm flashing back to Fluttershy's play with the animals in testing, testing one, two, three, and just how kind of awkward that got. Yeah, but after the whole session, you know, Princess Luna kind of accepts the whole thing and move on to Cantalot. Well, first she falls on a whoopee cushion. Uh... I've been wanting to use that sound effect, but I wanted to be proper. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty much perfect for the for the sound effect, actually. But yeah, like you were saying, Silver, they decide to move to Counterlot, where they start putting all those pranks to use mm-hmm. uh, on the different regal regal royal ponies, uh, from uh, from royalty to uh to the poor guards. Mm-hmm. That I'm pretty sure they don't get paid enough for this. Probably not, but you you can't really get mad at the princess. You, I'll see you in court. Oh wait, you run it. Mm-hmm. I win, you lose. <laughs> Although it is kind of funny that they have a, a cutout of one of the thunder imps. <laughs> and yeah, it's, it's not worth... a, it's not a cutout. It's a it's a suit actually. Like they yeah. have that has a zipper and everything. Yeah, and almost missed the joke. I mean, one. Here's where the the comic takes a blow in my eyes, as they're passing a, a band of uh, ho- hoity toities. Mm-hmm. Even though he's not in there, they have that uh, art critic from Fluttershy's micro in there. <laughs> yeah, a, a character they should keep as far away from sight as possible. Oh, oh, that and, guy. And also, but they make the joke of fancy schmancy. There is a pony named Fancy Schmancy, which is a wonderful play on the pony names, much like Namby Pamby. <laughs> It's also uh, really good to know that Fancy Mancy goes along with Fancy Pants, so they could be of the same family. There you go, the fancies. Mm. Oh, but now, now I know I'm about to incite your rage. Oh, James, feed me your rage, <laughs> because, because 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 we're at the scene where they're trying to plan out Luna's jokes for the for the goof off, and she's wondering how she can keep pranking Celestia. And Pinky suggests, why don't you get pranked? And Luna refuses. She cannot accept the idea that ponies would laugh at her. It speaks to her insecurity about this whole thing. And throughout the comic, Pinky's been saying, if you want to make people laugh, you have to be willing to be laughed at. Mm -hmm. Which is not entirely an accurate saying in my eyes. There's laughter where you're inciting people to laugh. There's laughter where you're being singled out and excluded from the group, mm-hmm. and, and that's not okay. True, true. But then, and that's what I've been saying about this comic here, where Luna wants to dish out the pain or the funnies, but is not willing to take the funnies in return because it's all fun and games when you laugh, when you make a joke at someone and you laugh at that person. But if a person does it to you and you get pissed off, that's where where things get dicey and not fun anymore. Yeah, but this is actually the part of the comic that loses me, is that, uh, yeah, I can get Luna as an insecure character who has to live in the shadow of her sister, and uh, it is true that she has to put up with a lot of things, especially because she was absent during all those celebrations with the, the Chocolate Festival and all that, but... uh that that last panel where Luna calls Pinkie Pie a clown, mm-hmm. and it's not like she's been calling her a clown because of funnies and all that. No, she's re- legitimately ups- upset, and she's using the word clown as an insult. And I'm like, they are portraying Luna as such. In that moment, Luna comes off as so unlikable and so douchey. Like she's like she's letting the insecurities get the best out of her, which is something that I can totally relate to. And yes, I have been in, I have been insecure in the past, and I have acted wrong with my friends, and I have given them like you know I gave very bad responses, very bad reactions, and I had to come back and apologize right after. I felt terrible in those moments, 
and I'm pretty sure that Luna doesn't feel very very happy on that last on the next page. But this is not the Princess Luna that we know. This is this is this is Luna getting the worst get the getting the worst get the worst out of her. And this is where the comic loses me. The way that they represent and they uh, they portray Princess Luna is not a nice one. No, thank you. I I pass on this on this characterization. It is certainly a low point for Luna that this is the first time her insecurity has made her belittle another pony. And Pinky's face in the next panel, where she says, "Oh, I see. Oh, that you have got to have flint for a heart if that doesn't hurt. If that doesn't make you hurt." <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it does hurt. Yeah. It does hurt. That face. That 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 is the face of of a sad pony. That yep. is not a happy pony. That is a very sad. Sad face. But in some ways, this is... There's that old saying, who but the fool can speak truth to power? And the next three panels demonstrate that as... Well, one, Luna apparently acknowledges she has just said the most unlikable things she could ever say. She says, Pinky, I didn't mean it like that. Well, you weren't a very good communicator then, are you? Hmm. Uh, and Pinky realizes that this has never been about being funny. This is not about making ponies laugh. This is about feeding your ego. So, hey, in the aftermath of Rainbow Dash and Trixie, we have Luna's ego. Oh, God. Let's let's have a three-part story with those. Oh, no. Bonus. The princess, the former queen, and the acrobatic. <laughs> a new sitcom on CBS. <laughs> the, <laughs> I thought you were going to say Fox TV. I would expect Fox to do something like that. Yeah, they'd shuffle it around for, from different time spots and click cancel it because it had no viewership. I have issues with Fox. <laughs> but um, I, I don't talk about Fox. <laughs> now, as much as I agree that what Luna said was hor- <clears throat> excuse me, horribly cruel to Pinky and just paints her in a negative way, I am kind of sympathetic for this line. When, when Pinky says, you just want to beat Celestia at something, and Luna says, can you blame me? She's so perfect and I'm so not. The whole point of Nightmare Moon, and this is why I don't support the Nightmare Rarity arc as much, Luna felt trapped in Celestia's shadow all her life. Mm-hmm. And that is the cru- and that didn't just go away. Even if Luna's learned from her mistake, that insecurity remains. This is really, I feel like this is getting to the heart of her character, and part of that may require going through unpleasant territory. I'm actually, I guess I'm okay with a character doing something terrible as long as it's part of their growth to not, to get over that. And so part of this is Luna, you gotta say, Luna, get your head out of your unmentionables. And while the final panel, as they walk away, Luna, well, Pinky walks away depressed, Luna buries her head in her notes, and Mr. Tibbles sleeps through it all. (laughs) Adding just enough cuteness not to make me unhappy. I actually didn't notice, uh, uh, Tiberius was on the on the scene until until now. He it, it is good that they keep acknowledging that Luna has a pet in the comics. Yay! Yay! But uh, let us move on because we're getting all super heavy. Yep, yep. And and now you're about to hear me cry again because <laughs> yes, because okay. Uh, well, I'm actually about to get a little bit maddish because as Twilight and Pinky go to the Chuckle Lot. There is a blue pony with a gray mane in the background that looks an awful lot like Clutterstep. My OC. Blue pony. I don't, I, I'm only just noticing it's actually a female unicorn, but the color scheme draws to mind. It's like, well, I guess that's as close as my character will ever get to being canon. <laughs> oh, well. Ah, holy crap, you're right. I'm actually seeing it right. <laughs> Because I'm working on your picture, you're absolutely correct. He, she, oh no, it's Rule 63 Clutter Step. Oh no. He got, he, he got made a unicorn like he always wanted, but now he lost his cutie mark. Oh, the, oh, the equality. <laughs> <laughs> this is just too much. And then Pinky's, Pinky has this ability to bounce back when she finds a new gift on a table reserved for her. Yay. And, and Princess Celestia, who's drawn very odd. I'm sorry, but th- this is one of the weirder depictions of Celestia I've seen in a, mm. in a comic. Oh yeah, with not with I, not cl- with not clutter step in the foreground. I I do have to say that 
She has a very, very short neck on that one last panel in page 20. Like, maybe I'm too used to talk with Celestia stuff yeah. uh, every now and then whenever I stream, but I'm looking at that neck and I am like, that is so short, especially in the next panel. Because in the next panel, she has the normal neck, but in that one, oh my god, what is wrong with your neck? Where did, where, where did it go? <laughs> she doesn't want to stick her neck out for her sister. <laughs> uh. But here, here's the moment, the moment where the hippogriff doth cry. <laughs> for as she, as Celestia says that Luna won't be joining us, Celestia interrupts saying, I'm sorry to do this and I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> And I read that several times, like, no. No. No, you you do not make Luna Kanye West. <laughs> well, they you, mean... you do not make Luna one of the most immature and morally disrespective uh, entertainers in America. I have no <laughs> respect for Kanye West. <laughs> I, I adore Princess Luna, and never the two shall meet. Yeah. Just... <laughs> and the funny thing is that it's, it's second-tier canon. Oh, second. oh god! It's second tier cannon, and I'm trying to find a table to flip, but they're all bolted down. I have anger issues. Se- second tier cannon with the tears of a hypocrite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. My rage! You're funny. I am firing weapons randomly. Uh, take, take aim at the comic. He is impervious to my rage. <laughs> Uh, All right. So basically, Luda goes on a spiel about how they are important, and Celestia is the one who's forgotten her place. Mm-hmm. And at first, you know, I'll be honest, you know it's going to turn out all right in the end, but it, this is a fun setup to say Luna's embraced her goofy side by acknowledging she's so uptight. And next thing you know, it's pies everywhere. Everyone's covered in white stuff, oh. which we just got Rule 34 I no, am so no. happy that I am not the one bringing this up because I was going to, but thank you, Silver, no. for taking the bullet for me. <laughs> I've, I've seen the season four premiere, Pinky dreaming about being covered in creamy, creamy frosting. I'm sorry, people. If you're over 16, this is a given. Yeah, I know. And the, 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 the flashback potion and the, the binds, tentacles, whatever. Oh, God, no. You know what you, you know what you did there. So, so, you know. So anyway. <laughs> I'm trying so now, to... <laughs> Go on. now, now, th- now that Pinky's making sure that Twilight's covered in her white stuff, uh... <laughs> gonna make Norman faint. <laughs> Luna finally trips, falls, and uh, crashes into Celestia, and she finally is willing to laugh at herself while everyone waits in stunned silence. So, <laughs> it's funny that this is meant to be the triumph. Uh, and perhaps the reconciliation. I'd like to assume that Luna pulled Pinky aside after the chuckle lot and just said, you were right. I'm sorry I said those things. Thank you so much for waking me up. But uh, we don't get to see that on screen, on page. And I, I would have liked that. I would have liked if we could have ended with a true reconciliation and a strengthening of the friendship. As it is at the end here, uh, poor Luna is getting over herself, but has her friendship with Pinky really been strengthened? I guess it has, because it's one of those um, things where they take it off screen. It's one of those open endings that it will be it will be a lot better if they actually develop up on it. Mm-hmm. But if if they, they it it feels like they do nothing with it. It's like yeah, they do have a couple of scenes together and they are working together and then Luna calls Pinkie Pie a clown and that is the last interaction that they have in the comic. So, because if you think, of, that is the last time that they are actually talking directly to each other when Pinkie Pie is 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 insulted by Luna. And yeah, they could have been a lot better if they have given that a bit of a closure, but they didn't. And as it stands right now, they didn't do that. So, hey... Your guess is as, is as good as mine. Actually, I can give you more than a guess, for I have the unpublished script for this comic. Oh. And, ori- oh. and originally, thanks to IDW censorship, the final panels would have been Pinky and Luda embracing, oh, still covered no, in white no, frosting, no, 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 rolling no, on the no, stage, licking no, each other no, clean. No, 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 and going, no, yes, no, yes. Go on, go on. <laughs> no. Uh, keep going. What? 
white frosty to everywhere. Nope, Twilight nope. thought it looked so fun. Final thoughts. She decided to Final thoughts. Norman, you are such a party pooper. Uh, we, can, we can talk about fan fiction after the show. But we will not be recorded. I know. Something tells me you're going to edit this out. Oh, come on. Just look at, just look at the span of Celestia's wings as she's rolling uh, with her sister no, in no. the frosting. Oh, yeah. Okay, anyway, final thoughts. <laughs> final thoughts <laughs> is, oh my. <laughs> final thoughts is wing boner. <laughs> Yes, turns out I can be a dirty, dirty hippogriff <laughs> as I cry uh, from my favorite princess being made Kanye West. Audience, you silver, silver quill fans, this is your guy here. Uh, yeah, you guy. see the things that we have to put up with? We are so lucky and you're not. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, that was good. That was uh, good. Uh, I, was it good for you as well? <laughs> Oh, I need a cigarette. Aye, aye, aye. Uh, I need a I need a cigar. What are you talking about, cigar? <laughs> oh no! What, anyway, what's the, thing, what's the thing now? Vaporizers? Oh uh, like, no! Uh, yeah, the e-cigarettes. Ah, uh, hipster uh, stuff. Uh, anyway, I don't smoke. Just so for all you kids out there who. You should not be listening to me right now. What the heck? <laughs> yes, no. Yeah. Don't listen to him right now. Oh no! I'll keep it family friendly on my on my review show. But... <laughs> But when I'm here, I bring the chaos. Oh, you. And that's why I love having you around. <laughs> All your Rule 34s are belong to the MBS show. Oh, CD was going to have a hard time when eating this one. Yeah, oh, keep har- going hard and I... time. <laughs> very, very hard. Keep going and I will release the pictures. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, actually, yeah, so... no. Go ahead, go ahead, man. We were, we were saying something about final thoughts. Yes. Yes, final thoughts. Uh, I always vote for uh, alphabetical order backwards, so go for it, Silver. You sure? I've, I've, I've commandeered the summary of this comic. Perhaps I've barely given you two a chance to talk. That's cool. <laughs> it's, you know, it's perfectly fine. Well, I think out of the three of us, I'm probably the most... Uh, it's not, it's supportive is the wrong word, but I, I forgive a lot. Optimistic. Optimistic. Now that might be the way to put it. It's Luna. That was an awful moment for Luna. When you make Pinky cry or, it, or at least take away that fun, that's, it's like picking on Fluttershy. It instantly lowers your likability. So. That was a low point. I accept it in that it's part of Luna's character growth, but. We're faced with the idea that every time Luna seems to learn something, every time she learns that she has the support of her of the, her fellow ponies, next issue she forgets it and she's concerned about them laughing at her. She learns to lighten up and interact with ponies in, in Luna Eclipsed, and in the comics she's back to shouting and scaring everyone. It feels, <laughs> to draw a strange analogy... She is like Rodimus Prime of the G1 Transformers. Every time he'd learn something about gaining confidence and being a leader, it would go out the window the next episode so we could go through a very similar character arc. And you just think, is Luna trapped by her Nightmare Moon history as a redemptive character? Mm. Is that all she's ever going to do make up for it? I see. I see where you're going with this. And yeah, the, using that as a crutch for the whole... Sorry, using that as a crutch for Luna's whole characteristic is getting old really, really fast. We we all know that Luna has progressed beyond that point already because of a few comics here in between. We clearly see that in the Nightmare Rarity arc, she's gotten the confidence that the people trust in her. And in the micro, we see that she's improving a bit and in the show we can see that she's helping ponies each day at a time with helping in the, in the show she's pretty in the show she's pretty much completely over it yeah i mean like she's helping it she's helping the people with dreams and we i, I won't say that james because they're not telling us if she's completely over it but she does mention it in the season finale through songs where hey i i was I forgot her line, but she... I understand wanting more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So she mentioned it that they are two. And mm. I said, no, when I say that she's pretty much over it, do you remember the episode for whom the street evil toils mm-hmm. and how uh, surprisingly comfortable she is talking about the time when she was Nightmare Moon? And what happened when she gave in to the, you know... Temptation. To the nightmare, mm. yeah. Remember that? Mm. She was actually quite ha- quite comfortable talking about that for the sake of delivering a lesson mm. to someone else. Yeah. So I guess, that, I guess that she might have to struggle with it, put up with it, but I think she's already behind it when it comes to the to the show. Mm. The comics, I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. Uh, they really like to they really like to bring that up um, to uh, to use it as a character uh, to use it as a character trait. Yeah. Uh, not only in her own arc in the Nightmare Rarity arc, but uh, also in in the Reflections arc, mm-hmm. they bring that up. In the Luna Micro, they brought that up. In this one, they brought it up as well. They really like to talk about when Luna was Nightmare Moon. Yeah, and we'll see in the next micro if she brings that up back there too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't think Luna in the show has gotten too casual about it. It's like, hey, Twilight, remember that time I threw you <laughs> off a cliff? Wasn't that funny? Um, but no, huh? no. Oh, Guess yeah, you're right. <laughs> Guess it won't work now that you've got wings. <laughs> Not to uh, But there's, there's got to be more to Luna than just, I want to get over being Nightmare Moon. I, there's got to be a new challenge. Yeah, I do believe that will happen in the next micro that's coming up. The Spike Luna micro, was it? The, the Spike and Luna Friends Forever? Yeah, sorry, Friends Forever, my bad. Yeah, I do believe oh. they'll move things on from that point on because... Probably we'll get some kind of birthday incident again or whatsoever. I really, really want to believe that they won't touch upon the, oh, I used to be Nightmare Moon. Ooh. You never know. I will say I, I'd have a more firm answer for you now if uh, we didn't have delays in shipping due to labor disputes. Yeah, yeah. Curse, curse you, American economy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, well. That which spawns the, the MLP franchise taketh away. Yeah, 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 yeah. But James, what about you? Final thoughts? I, I'm very divided on this one episode. Actually, it makes me kind of, on this one uh, issue. It makes me kind of sad because I, I really like what they do with Princess Luna in the comics. I really like her in the in in the Nightmare Rarity arc. I think I think she was the driving force behind that uh, that comic. In that the, all the drama, all the conflict, all the things that happened. Uh, they all came from uh, from Luna. It, it was all happening inside, and it's not until the last issue that she and uh, she bears herself and just shows her shame and her her concern about her past. She was great in that comic. Like when they know how to use her character, they know what to do with Luna. It is pro- it's been proven over and over again, and I think that has spoiled us, or at least it has spoiled me. Which it kind of upsets me when I see that they completely waste her character. Um, in this one is the, the, the strength of the Friends Forever comics is that no two characters come on top of each other. They all end the comic on the same level. And in this one, it is pretty clear that uh, Pinkie Pie is the one that comes off as the best mayor. The one that is like, you know, the, the most willing to help, the most willing to laugh, the most willing to give a hand. Well, Luna just sees this as a challenge to try and beat her sister because she's tired to be on the bottom. Uh, I'm not trying to make innuendo or anything. You are just in your, with your mind in the gutter. Mm. But the thing is that... Oh, my God. <laughs> <sighs> I, I never escaped this, this time. <laughs> You're having so much fun. But, yeah, the, the, the I completely lost my chain of thought. Thank you, Silver. Um, <laughs> Uh, usually both characters come off on the same level and they end up being like, you know, all good and good and all right on their own right. In this one, it not so much. I like the concept of Chuckle Lot. It, actually, I really like it as, I see Chuckle Lot as, you know, those late night TV shows where they will have actual politicians and leaders going to them, uh, just to laugh at themselves or uh, do something funny. Like, wasn't it like the last episode of the Colbert Report? 
uh, kind of hosted by Barack Obama, <laughs> and Barack Obama was blatantly laughing at himself. So that, that that also happened with um, uh, that also happened in in the UK. There was also an episode where they had like the prime minister showing up or an ex prime minister showing up as well on uh, on a show called Mock the Week. Mm. So. That happens. That is something that I like that relates to the real world and that is kind of enjoyable. But the interaction between Luna and Pinky could have been a lot better. And especially the characterization of Princess Luna, mm-hmm. which I think is the worst part of the entire comic. This is something that shouldn't have been the way it was, but hey, you cannot do anything about it. So <sighs> let's hope that they do better in the, on the French Forever uh, Spike and Luna, yep, which sure is coming so. next. Well, Spike and Celestia brought out the best in each other, so we'll we'll hope again. Yeah, and I'm just going to bring this up before we forget. Um, in issue 27, was it? Issue 27. Was it the one uh, with... Is it one of the new ones? Yeah, the, the deer. one with... Oh, the one oh. with the trees. Yeah. Was it, was it 27? Because I'm trying to remember really hard. It was 27, right. yes. In... You're going to talk about the royal piñatas, aren't you? Yeah, I'm going to talk about royal piñatas. And that... Line at the back there when <laughs> Celestia. You and... said it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it's just that you. Okay, it's a serious matter where everything is. Everyone is in trouble. Blah blah blah. And Luna is just like smiling and just. Hey Celestia, don't say it. Hey Celestia, don't say it. You can reply back. We love to help, but we're too busy hanging around. <laughs> You You said it! it. (laughs) See? So the the pendulum has swung too far. Yeah, I mean, see, to me, this is... I I don't know why, but to me, this is how I see Luna in the comics. This is how I envision or how I enjoy Luna in the comics. This is the Andy Price, Katie Cook way of doing Luna. Yeah, I guess there are different schools of writing Luna and drawing Luna. There is the Andy Price and Katie Cook. There is the Tony Flix and Jeremy Whitley. And there is the um, and there is the Heather Newfer and Amy Meverson school of uh, drawing and writing for Luna. And in my opinion, I think the the, the one that caters more to my likes is the the Katie Cook and Andy Price one. I'm gonna say well, this is the one that is the one that takes the most the most the most um fun. With itself. Yeah, true. I'm just going to say this. I mean, the art style for all the Lunas done in the comic are good. They're wonderful yes. to see. I especially like the Tony Fleece art. And Andy oh, Price is still... That is, that, that is actually one thing that we haven't mentioned, the art, but please, the artwork, but please finish uh, and before I go into that. Yeah. To me, I really enjoy Andy Price's rendition of Luna. That's To me, that's the best version of Luna in the comics. But... And Tony Fleece did a good job doing so. Luna and Celestia are some of the hardest characters to draw, especially because of these ethereal flowing manes. I mean, how do you capture that in a fixed medium? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, and especially the scenes where where Luna is falling over or shouting, they do a really great job of uh, showing this energy and organic poses. So I think it's pretty fun and well-drawn overall. <laughs> Last comic, I was pointing out all the little things I noticed in the artwork because it was overall strong. I can't point to anything that looks out of place here. Mm. Oh, one, one more Luna that we forgot to mention. Zen and the Art of Gazebo Repair. Oh, uh, that, that is Sandy Price and Katie Cook. Yeah, so yeah. we have that rendition of Luna too, which is pretty... Hey, she don't mind to make a fool of herself. Look at the cherry eating contest. You are absolutely right! Oh my god, we forgot to mention that one. The cherry eating. It's Big Mac yeah. doesn't like cherries. <laughs> Big Mac doesn't like cherries, but Luna is like very happy to put her face into the cherry pie and blah 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 blah. She's my cherry pie. Put a smile on your face ten miles wide. <laughs> Who knows? She it's like I say, there's not a lot of consistency with Luna. It's always reversion, progression. She is made to fit the story rather than the other way around. Mm. Yeah, the, the the story doesn't fit around her. She's just no. Let's apply to her. Mm. Let's uh, yeah. yeah. Now, one thing we we've completely overlooked, and it has nothing to do with Luna. Mm-hmm. Spike 
has to sit through Twilight's organization, Destine. But does he get to go to the comedy show? <laughs> you, no. Do you think he wants to? He wants to laugh at someone else's misery? This is Spike we're talking about. I mean, I, I think he'd rather be at home reading comics. Oh, God. He, li- he likes to be included in Canterlot, his old hometown. Yeah, probably if he does go, he's be hanging around with Joe. That's right. You get five ki- cups of coffee, you're going to be giggling like a madman at the at the chuckle <laughs> lot. <sighs> Spike, how many donuts have you had? Not enough. <laughs> so I think we've exhausted everything we can say about Luna, Spike, Twilight, Pinky, Celestia, uh, Donut Joe, <laughs> Donut Steel, <laughs> female... <laughs> Female clutter step who's a unicorn. <laughs> Yay. Kanye West. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to let it go, aren't you, Silver? If unless you want me to break into frozen theme, no. Uh Silver I don't know. Silver okay. Silver. You just need to let it go. Oh, you're, you're going to make me burst into song and then you then you'll be in trouble. <laughs> you'll all be in trouble. Uh, do you want a quote, Kanye? <laughs> Uh, it doesn't have no. to be a good one. Rule 34, 34, uh, it's all but... over this comic. 34, 34, <laughs> I'm going to hell for this joke. Uh, it sounds like the In flow. your pants Ooh. and also in your face. Nope, nope, nope. So anyway, James, next week, what's comic, what review are you going to do? We're just a huge disgrace. <laughs> I just don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> Norman will not be able to edit this out. <laughs> Who say I'm going to do the editing? <laughs> uh, give it to Sweetie Bot. She's going to get desperate. <laughs> oh, my gosh. But next week, we are going to be talking about uh, Friends for Revolution number 8. With, uh, speaking of Katie Cook and Andy Price, hey, look at that. It's written by Katie Cook and it's drawn by Andy Price. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, Trains, Trains, and Cut with Wheels, starring, uh, Best Pony and Second Best Pony. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's one of my favorites. Uh, this, this, this comic is special to me. This comic is special to me as well. The only reason. You, can, sorry? you cannot, you cannot do better than Rarity channeling her best John Candy. Mm. It's it's impossible. The, the the only reason why this comic is special to me is because that I've bought a physical copy of it and I bought it at Buck. Oh, same here. Uh, oh, not even, not so, not only that, but this guy, that uh, that Malaysian guy. We'll, we'll save it for next guy. week. We'll save it for next week. Um, <laughs> but I want to. Okay, okay. I'll save it for next week. Okay. <laughs> Okay, well, I think we've successfully traumatized the audience. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. They'll never yeah, be able but, to, re- they'll never read that pie throwing scene the same way again. Oh, no, no. Lo- lost 50, 50 subscribers today. <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, lost of, lo- yeah, all the Patreons, they, uh, they stopped following us and supporting us. And that's, that's, that's great. That's great. I'm gonna kill you, Silver. I swear to God, I'm gonna, they will never find your body. And, and everyone's saying, Silver Quill doesn't talk like that. Well, you, I'm a different kind of Silver Quill, baby. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> I, one day I want to try and get, Dr. Wolf in here. Dr. Wolf. Yeah, I'm just going to try and get him and see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. can you please help us with Silver Hand? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I am my own kind of help. It's just not the right kind of help. Uh, but he's too busy. Never mind. Uh, so we mentioned next week's comic. So anyway, take us out, James. Uh, take us out. Okay, uh, let me go get the leash. I'm gonna take you out for a walk. Yay! <laughs> Kinky. Aye, aye, aye. And the, shi- <laughs> and the yes. shippers do have new material. Aye, aye, aye. I hope so. I have yet to see a picture that ships Norman with silver. <laughs> <laughs> Throw that out there, audience. Throw that out there. <laughs> you can do with it whatever you want. Oh my! So on top. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much uh, for checking this out. Thank you for coming around, checking this uh, the show, and uh, we only hope to see you next week. Remember, if it's not with you, this wouldn't be possible. So, thank you so much for checking this out and coming around. 
This has been James Cork. And I am Norman Sanzo. And Luda is not Kanye West. <laughs> of course not, Silver. Of course not. Here, have some hot chocolate. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's fine. What delightful hot chocolate. <laughs> Silver, I'm going to let you finish, but I'm going to say your review show is the best show on YouTube. I'm dead from hot chocolate. <laughs> 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 oh no, he he cannot digest that. Oh shoot, I forgot that Kimbo Leaves cannot cannot process sugar. Uh, <laughs> no, call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. No, better yet, call a few, uh, call a, like a I don't know, call the coroner. Uh, boy. But anywho, see you next week. Bye bye. Adios. <laughs> He's dead. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you want to hide a body? <laughs> it doesn't need to be in one piece. <laughs> <laughs>